Hi, my name's Donna Underwood. I come from Plymouth. I'm going to start my story at one year old. By the time I was one year old, I was accidentally eating a load of medication. By the time I was two years old, I was given whooping cough, although I wasn't actually injected with whooping cough. It was an MMR jab. By the time I was three years old, I'd been electrocuted by putting a knife in the, in the plug socket. I never received any medical help. By the time I was four years old, I was nearly drowned. By the time I was four and a half, my parents separated. By the time of four years old, I was sexually abused by a narcissistic parent, systematically abused physically, mentally, emotionally. By the time I was seven years old, six to seven, my slavery started. My jobs were dishes, polishing, washing with a twin tub, whilst they were sat at the pub. I had to use the dryer, the ironing, putting clothes away, peeling spuds, whilst raising her children. I was six. By the time I was nine years old, I was sodomized. Now take it into account, under nine years old, I had every single abuse known to man. I was touched, I was licked, I was fingered, I was used, shall we say. By the time I was seven, my brain split. At age 11 years old, I went to a new school. I was forced to shower naked in front of the whole class. I was also brainwashed after outbursts from watching Childline, triggered by an advert. I was screamed at, forced to be silent, and made to stand in front of my abuser and a second abuser, his sister, who demoralized and shamed me as a liar. And all, all the time, I am sustained in serious sexual abuse. By the time I was 13 years old, I was kicked out. I was mentally unstable. At age 13 to 14, a doctor told the social services and the Devil and Cornwall police I was interviewed for seven and a half hours in a room with a detective and I only told about rubbing. I couldn't use the words. At age 13 was my very first panic attack at school. I had a seizure. Nothing happened. I was also sexually abused by a dirty old man at the age of 13. Flashed in the street on a separate time. This is where my suicide started. I started to sniff gas. I was going to school at the age of 14, pissed as a parrot. Nobody noticed. By 14, I was followed home by young boys calling from the bushes to try to get me inside. At age 15, I moved out and started living on my own. At 16, I became pregnant. I was again date raped at age 16, even though I was pregnant. Now I'm going to go into a little bit more detail. I find myself here today in front of my peers to give my account of my horrendous child abuse that I endured. I will give you my honest account of my memories and facts from my medical notes and memory. I was born to a very normal parents, working class. My mother came from Cornwall. My father came from Plymouth. I was the third child. I had two older brothers, only 16 months between us. Now, by the time I was only a year old, I'd been hospitalized by ingesting medication. Also, I was given MMR, which I explained. At three years old, I was electrocuted. I put a metal knife in the wall socket and was thrown across the room. I was not taken for medical attention. My mother told me all about it when I questioned her. The shocking story now gets very shocking. Please bear with me if I have to stop and breathe. By the time I was four and a half years old, we lived in a council house when my parents divorced. I will never forget the day. I know this to be true because I bugged my elder brother over and over again to tell me the story of when my parents had split up.
My very first memory of the man was on a scorching hot day. I can remember being very excited because my dad was planning a road trip in the car. Children from the street was all surrounding this person. It was my stepbrother's, stepmother's brother. Soon enough, he was around grooming and building the trust of the children. He went on to abuse me at four and a half years old to 13 years old. I was being sexually abused graphically at every moment. Babysitting, play fighting and not enough. He used the ploy to not allow me to join in because I was a girl, which made me want to join in. I was five years old, my dad was telling me that my mum was gone and this new woman was now my mother. I got so upset, I tried to kill her. In my mind, I really thought it would work. I put tacks, pins in a pillow, sharp end pointing up, thinking that this would kill her. It didn't. By the time I was five years old, I was dealing with gross indecency, touching, oral, physical abuse, beatings, belt, ha hands use, hair pulling. Emotionally, I was tormented. I dealt with sibling tra trauma too. I was the only one being abused. Psychologically, there was mind games, fear, unloved, mood swings, systematic abuse, every single day and every night. I was dragged out of my bed. I was hit whilst asleep. I was traumatized. I was also given domestic slavery. By the time I was six or seven years old until I was older, a lot of the jobs I did. This was not the end of my chore. I did many, many chores. By the time I was aged nine years old, this was a terrifying year for me. I can barely remember that whole year. What I do remember is it was a beautiful day in the sky. It lifted my heart. I was always free if I could play or interact with normal people and the love and attention that they would show me would warm me. I never got it at home. I was bought a new swimsuit. I was very excited. I was never given much. I was running around in the 80s in pop shorts and a white t-shirt. The trim was red and had probably been... from a cheap market stall. I was given a bikini at the age of nine. To my shock, I was to use this one piece and the bobble flower suction hats that we all wore when we went to primary schools. Pale blue with pink and yellow ice cream on it. The pants had ties on both hips and the top was a classic triangle with a neck and black ties. Although my age was eight to nine years old, I was very small. I looked about seven years old. I noticed that my sexual abuse was standing out more and more. The abuser started to show signs of jealousy. He was around 18 or 19 years old himself. But the, he first started the abuse and he would wonder why he watched over a girl in the park. I was five. He used to get jealous of the other boys paying attention to me. This happened a street away from where I lived. The abuse was very, very graphic. When alone, he would do touching, groping, under the knickers, masturbation on himself and me. When he was close by, he would catch me with a back turn and threaten me viciously whilst touching me. And this was all in shot of my family. He would visit my bed when he babysat for my dad. That was the good excuse to put me to bed after faking that he had put me to bed. My brain broke snapped whilst I was around seven years old and I had what was called described as disassociation or DID or multiple personality disorder. 
Well, I was taking the washing up to the landing and I had three doors and a small corridor in front of me. Whilst well, thinking sad, I was going to be punished again, punched around and slapped whilst I was asleep, dragged about by my hair. Just this time, I was overwhelmed with stress. My back was facing the parents' room and I would place their clothes in front as I folded them, placed them by the doors. And then I would go on to put them in the chest of drawers or the wardrobes. I looked over to the white net blowing in the gentle breeze. I could hear all the voices of the children playing in the summer sun. I picked up a garment and folded it as I looked down. There in my hand was my dad's pants, a picture of a plug with prongs on it and the words, you're electric. I heard a very high pitched sound and I spaced out, staring there. All I heard was a hum and a ring in my head. I dropped them. I realized at the age of seven years old what my abuser was doing to me. It was sex. I ran away so many times as a child and many times the police took me back. What was strange is my body was in slow motion, extremely slow motion, but a trail would follow me wherever I moved. I do not remember much else apart from the time I was raped at nine years old. Trauma was getting progressively worse. The rape. To set the scene, I can only remember that it was early autumn time and I was sent home because of the Hurricane Charlie, my dad's name, in 1986. I was playing on my scooter and I was riding it down the street and halfway on the left it reared into a grove. I was unaware that my brake pads had been removed and I was trying to slow down. I was thrown to my side whilst holding my scooter. I spun a full circle and proceeded with speed up the pavement and knocked myself out on the wooden fence leaving me severely injured with cuts and abrasions, bleeding knees, elbows and forearm. My hips were grazed and a bump on my head. Crying, I went to, took the scooter and hobbled across the road and went to my back door. I was told by the beast, that's my stepmother, to go up to her parents' house to get some antiseptic cream. I winced and hobbled up to the grove. Whilst wiping my tears and picking out the gravel from my cuts of my wounds, I was expecting her parents to be at this house. My abuser was. I gently knocked and a little cautious, of course. Her mother hated children and it showed. She once slapped me hard on the face. So I was expecting her to be there. My sexual abuser opened the door he was alone, and at the age of nine, I was sodomized brutally by him. I hid the bloody underwear and put it in a bush. I stopped speaking and shut down for a whole year. I was nine years old. My next thought of clarity was walking down the road with a cigarette in my mouth, and I was hoping that anyone would notice and call the police. I was in primary school uniform, and my hair was standing up because of the Hurricane Charlie. Nobody saw, nobody cared, nobody helped. We went on holiday and I would not talk. We went to Big Bree Breach and stayed in a caravan with my nan who stayed with us on weekends and made me feel safer. It was harder to brutalize me with my nan there. The whole attack had a very big impact on my brain because I was still being beaten, tormented and coerced into silence with fear, threats, constant punishment, and I mean severe punishment, for blurting it out in the first place. I have told the police I have been interviewed for seven and a half hours when I was 13 years old. I was interviewed under social services care. I was being looked after by CAMS, 
which is social services. Nobody done nothing. I didn't even get a psychologist. All I got was a nurse taking notes. To this day, the police will not give me my statements because I ran away at five years old and it's documented. No child at five runs away, not without a reason, okay? I'm gonna leave it there for now because it's very, very traumatizing. But just to say, I have been trafficked. I have been gang raped. I have gone through everything known to man. And still, the police do nothing. Nobody wants to hear me, and I am silenced. What a warrior. <laughs> you're still here, you're still fighting. And this, this is the stories we don't want repeating ourselves, guys. We don't want a generation that has to go through the torment, the silence, the brick walls, nobody to speak to, isolated, made to feel that it's you that's the criminal, victimised, it's, it's not arrested, targeted with the police for opening your mouth too much. This, it ends now, this is why we're out here. This generation, we will not be silenced. And thank you so much, Donna, what a warrior.